Hey everyone, this is Bethany, and I'm going to be doing another book review today, and it's on Rachidaculus, The Biology, Natural History, and Husbandry. And I just kind of want to go with, go through with you some things that I like about this book and some things that I don't like about this book. I'll go over the good things about it, and then I'll talk a little bit about the bad things about it. Uh, so it talks a little bit about uh, New Caledonia, the climate, uh, just general remarks about Rachidaculus. And I like how it actually shows the habitat that they're found, and it shows range maps too, for the for each species. And another thing, it shows at what height in the canopy each species is found. For example, the crested gecko is found around nine feet up in the canopy, and then the Rachidaculus leachianus are found 60 to 90 feet up in the canopy generally. And then it goes uh, talking about temperature throughout the year. And I think it has something with rainfall in the back. Let's see. I think there's a rainfall chart. Where is it? Yeah, climatic diagrams in the back. And oh, one cool thing that I learned was that uh, the crested geckos live like in the crested geckos and the Rachidaculus leachianus. They live in the same tree sometimes. So what the crested geckos will do, they'll hide in the really, they'll uh, perch on the really small branches because uh, the big uh, giant geckos, they can't, they're so heavy that they won't be able to reach those little limbs because they'll actually eat the crested geckos. So that's kind of a way that crested geckos avoid being eaten is they hang out on the uh, thin branches. Um, it also shows a little bit about the deforestations and threats to the Rachidaculus in New Caledonia. And, and then we go on to actual species accounts. And it's, it's really uh, scientific type stuff, like it shows uh, dorsolateral scales, you know, how many um, labial scales or rostral scales, you know, it goes into all that. And uh, for each species, let's see. Uh, I'll just take the gargoyle gecko for example. It shows the uh, distribution, uh, care and breeding, description, habitat and behavior. I love that. Oh, and it shows what their habitat is like in the wild, and then a few examples of wild specimens. Now, this book wasn't really meant to be a care book to, you know, figure out how to care for them in captivity. It's a little outdated as far as the husbandry goes, so I wouldn't suggest getting this book if you're wanting to learn about the husbandry. Um, this book is best for if you want to learn about what they're like in the wild, because that's a primary goal for people who keep reptiles and amphibians in the wild. We want to replicate as much as possible what the conditions they are they have in the wild. So this this is a good uh, help for that. Here's a Chihua. Shows a Chihua habitat. And shows uh, how to sex them, egg laying, everything is covered. And here's a cool illustration of the crested gecko. Now going into a few of the things that I don't like about this book, uh, the temperatures are recorded in Kelvin instead of Fahrenheit. So in the front of the book, you have this convert conversion thing that you have to convert the temperatures whenever you want to know what they're talking about. And also, like I said, the husbandry uh, information is a little outdated. Some of the scientific names have been upgraded. And because this book was written by two German guys, the grammar is a little questionable sometimes. Like. It's kind of funny, but uh, some more things that I like about this. Yeah, like I said, they have range maps for each species, what they like in New Caledonia. And let's see. It's pretty much everything I like about it. Um, lots of good pictures. And it's just a good scientific book to have in your library if you have any Rachidaculus. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye.